All right, a quick rant about power supplies. So I'm not in any way contending to compare this Keysight to this Tenma. Um, not to knock on Tenma, they've made some decent products in the past, but this 728335A has a user interface bug that got me looking at the thing more carefully. Volts, volts, current, 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 volts, volts, current, what? No. Look, guys, if you're going to make this thing symmetric around the mode button, which makes sense, I, I think that makes a lot of sense, you do not flip these if you have not also flipped these. You have to be consistent. The consistency in the user interface matters. Somebody who's sitting over here probing something on an oscilloscope, looking at the oscilloscope screen, wanting to, you know, just reach over and tweak the knob while they're holding the probe in place, is not going to notice that. Just like on your older products, you know, this knob here, this button here, was a different color. Um, what the heck? It would have cost you, you know, basically nothing. If you look at the inside of this thing, there's enough space in there that you could have flipped these pots around. There's some space in there. You could have routed the traces differently if you really wanted to. I understand if you can't flip all this around. This is a little bit more intense up here. The, that layout area is a bit more dense, but come on. Moments thought. I, uh, now, I have another little beef here. Somebody, I'm assuming somebody in marketing, decided, oh, it should have a 5 volt output. So they added this in here, but look at the wiggle on that. It's acceptable to mount things via components. It is not acceptable to mount them in ways where you get weird vibrational modes. How many of these broken shipping? I mean, they're hanging capacitors off the inside here, which I know is a common practice, even if I don't particularly like it, but that's not cool. Um, somewhat more concerning, they powder coated the back. The older model had a substantial heat sink on the back. This is a photo somebody posted on the EEV blog forum. And they even went all the way to install heat sinks on the front, although I think that's really just to distribute the force more of having that nut and washer, I guess. Um, but you can see it got a sill pad. No heat sink, not really. This is the back panel. It's powder coated, but worse, they powder coated without any kind of selective process. So there's powder coat underneath these. And the sill pad's not the right size, and they just jammed the screw through. So you're not really sure that the sill pad's insulating the conductive plate on the back of this transistor. And you're also not really sure that this isn't exposed because the metal powder coating. I don't know if I can show how shiny that is. Apologies, but I'm one-handed at the moment. Um, you know, and they, they did a pretty good job with the rest of this. Like, there were four relays in here. They chose to downgrade to two, I guess, to save winding on the transformer. But you can see the older one had, this is also from the same post, um, the capacitors, I think, are undersized, and I've tried running this at full current output. You can feel this, they actually do get warm. I haven't measured the ripple yet. Now, they say 20 millivolt ripple on the output, but um, I find it hard to believe that that shouldn't be larger. And you can see from the silkscreen outline, the original manufacturer, the original designer, thought that it should be. Um, I love that transformer, but really, guys? I, I get it's a $75 power supply. I, I accept that I'm going to be getting some Chang brand capacitors. Not Nichicon or, you know, Hemet or whoever, but come on. Um, and I get that they switched from what was obviously the whole pattern for another one of the power switches to this board mount one that, you know, I'm sure is a failure point, but most people probably just press it once to have them match because they're going to use it like plus and minus 12 or plus and minus 5 and then leave it alone. But yeah, um, I know that when Keysight uh, made this guy, they were really proud of having banished these little flat flex cables. Personally, I don't have any problem with them here, but what does irk me is if you look at this thing. That 
is not the right size. I don't know if is the zoom working. 